If you're looking for a true engine builder, Furnace from Arcane Wonders might be the game for you. I've got Gastel here today. We've got a first impressions. We'll look at the mechanisms, the components, and the aesthetic, the theme, the upside downside to the game, and we'll compare it to other games on Legendary Tactics. Okay, Gastel, you've just taught me to play this game. We haven't played it very much. This is a first impressions review. We want to thank Arcane Wonders for sending us a review copy of the game, uh, but let's begin. So uh, you taught me the game. How hard was it to learn? I didn't find it too difficult to learn. We did forget, uh, because we were playing two player, we did forget to include the bot. I don't know if that would have changed a ton, but it, I mean, I have so many cards, I would have had less, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So it, it's a bit of a bidding game. So let's let's discuss the mechanisms first. So um, essentially, this is a trade and swap and upgrade game with the resources on the left being less valuable, resources on the right being more valuable. We work our way forward. And as the game progresses, we have these cards are flipping out and we're bidding on them, essentially. Right. And we do that with these tokens. And so for this game, we had six cards coming out. And essentially these cards are what become your engine. So uh, tell me about how some of the cards work then. Well, there's two aspects to it. If there's, an, uh, if there's no arrow, then you're just gonna get that resource. So this would be uh, getting some coal. But if there's an arrow like here, this would be converting the coal into oil. However, what I found very interesting was in the bidding mechanism, the, the, the fact that if I put a three here and you put a two underneath, then I get this card, but you get this top benefit two times. That's right. And I found there was sometimes there was a benefit in underbidding. Yes, immediate gratification if you need a resource right away. This, you want to underbid, for sure. I actually found the bidding system was my favorite part of the game, uh, because that's where, for me, the strategy is. Once I've placed a four down, your highest four, you can't beat me because I was the first one to get my four there. Right. So do I want to play that early and claim the one I want, uh, then allowing you to basically control the game. So well, if you put your four down, my three becomes the most powerful th that's right. because there's no more four that I have to worry about and I'm gonna be guaranteed two, two cards. Two cards, yes. absolutely. So there's definitely some strategy to that. Um, I did enjoy that, that part of it. Um, I will confess mechanism wise, I don't love games where you um, trade two of these to get four of those to get one of these which gives you one victory point and to me sometimes they feel especially in the early game a little bit plotty um, did this feel like that to you and do you like that mechanism or no uh, it felt a little bit like that I, I found the fourth the f end of the fourth round I was ready for the game to be over okay but I don't want to make that sound like it was bad I think the design was perfect that it had four rounds um, I, don't, I think a fifth round would have been just superfluous. Yes. However, it got a bit ridiculous because you had this extra bidding token as your special power totally randomly generated. Yes. Um, and so you ended up with all these cards. I ended up with two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven cards to your. Four, can six, count them. 14, 15, 15, so I had four more. Right, and so one more per round. Okay, I expected, it looked like you had way more than me. But um, essentially that allows you to use your resources in better ways or more efficiently or to also produce more resources. Although again, we we messed up by not, not including, including the- Harry uh, the bot. The, the bot, yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. But I, it, what I think was the difference in the game was I, recognized that the oil was much more valuable yes. one turn before you, and so I right. was able to grab a bunch of oil before you, and then my engine just exploded. That third round, I just got so many points. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and part of the, the issue was I got to the end of my engine building and realized I hadn't actually figured out a way to create oil. So, right. um, and so you, you can get tied that way, so absolutely. Any last thoughts on mechanism before we move on? Uh, I would have liked to have seen uh, more done with the uh, money. Um, hmm. And that's uh, the victory condition is get the most money. It's a very industrialist kind of game. It should have been something I could have like, you can spend five to grab some resources if you right. needed them. Oh, that's fair. At okay. any time. Nice, 
Yeah, that'd be awesome. So sacrifice victory points in order to potentially get more victory points through a, a power play. Right. Yes, that's a great idea. Very good. Okay, so let's move on to components and aesthetics. Uh, right away when we got this out of the box, you remarked that the cards felt like uh, linen. Oh, they're beautiful. and Really nice. And when you upgrade them, so upgrading is um, uh, an action you can do with these uh, wrench tokens. And when you upgrade them, you get this beautiful picture on the back. Uh, uh, I didn't check to see if they're all different, but just looking at mine, there's only a few that are the same. Um, I guess those guys are the same. But I I just enjoyed the look. We had this uh, upgrade uh, mat. Uh, I thought the mat was nice to work with. I think the game works perfectly without the mat, mm -hmm. but just as, you know, sort of keeping the river of cards and the components in an easy to grab location, it was a nice centerpiece. It feels like a nice anchor that I, I would definitely want to have for the game. And this, it says on the box that this is stored within the original box too, so you don't have a superfluous mat hanging around. That's great. These were nice to hold in your hand. It was nice to I like, slap those down. I like that they're sized differently too, so if you slap on top of you know you get your little one and I can just go bam, boom it, yeah it, it looks kind of cool now we should mention too that um, we have a copy of the expansion here uh, this is furnace interbellum so um, it'll add jazz the age of jazz and airships oh. um, so we may take a look at the components in that a little bit later sounds good sounds but good. Um, now I don't usually love um, these kind of tokens um, if you've seen any of my videos you know that I, I frown on those but these ones are looking a little cooler and this reminds me very much of power grid yes it does and you could 3d print up new tokens if you wanted to you could absolutely yeah. so um, this game isn't really I think about the aesthetics and the components though it really comes down to being a card game and the cards are beautiful and I like the multi functionality that there's the two sides to upgrade and you can tell the difference the this side has this uh, transparent um, so you can actually see when you upgrade this what's going to be coming so in terms of the functionality of the aesthetics it works really well with the gameplay to be like "Ooh, I want that power you upgrade it and and now you can do this action as well that was very clever and I found that I was able to plan my my production phase yes uh, so we have the bidding phase and then that you go into a production phase where you actually use your factories and I found that I was looking at these and thinking okay well I upgrade first and then I can do this and then do that and the order was sort of coming clear Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, let's talk about the theme for a moment. Uh, you and I are both players who love a rich theme where you pull yourself out of the game. Does this feel like the kind of game that complements its theme, which is to be essentially an industrialist creating an engine uh, and making as much money as you possibly can? I didn't not feel like an industrialist, <laughs> but I also didn't feel like I was in the middle of the Industrial Revolution. Right. It's not that immersive. It's not that immersive. I mean, you're getting coins and, and that in itself made you feel like you were a, a capitalist of some sort sort of thing. Uh, but. I never felt like I was actually going to that factory. I was just going like this and cashing in whatever it was that I needed to cash in. Yes. I would say this is a game for people who love engine building mechanisms, but not necessarily uh, for people who are super invested in theme, story, narrative arc, that sort of thing. Um, I think it would I'd be agree. Yeah, okay. Um, in terms of comparisons to other games, uh, does it feel like any other engine builders that you've played? I felt this was uh, Splendor version 2.0. It was, it was very similar to Splendor. Uh, the one thing that was upgraded was the compensation. Uh, that's what you call when you, when you sort of get that instant gratification. Uh, I felt like the auction and the, the compensation made it feel more than Splendor, but this here felt like I'm grabbing a resource to trade it with another resource to finally get some coins. And it was very, from the beginning to end, you know, coal, then metal, then oil, then points. I would actually, it feels a lot like Power Grid to me. Um, only in the sense, uh, Power Grid has an auction where you're auctioning for the various tiles. I would say it's Power Grid without the board. <laughs> so um, it just comes down to you're just trading and wheeling and dealing in the resources themselves. Um, and a, a much lighter, I mean, Power Grid's fairly light to start with, but. 
I think uh, if I was to have serious gamers over, I would more rather p pull out Power Grid than Furnace, though. Yeah, I think that's fair. But I think this is a game that if you've got teenagers um, who just want to, or a family game night, this is a great for a family game night because it's not, it's not too onerous uh, and it's very easy to learn. Yes, and I think this is one for people who love planning and strategizing because once we got into your turn, I mean, you had so many cards and you needed to activate them in the right order in order to get the bonuses that you need at the right time. And so there's plenty of, of headspace there. I would say this one on that level is a little more complex than uh, Power Grid and definitely more than Splendor. Yes. Uh, Splendor's a much lighter fare, I would say, so it's really gonna depend on who your gamers are. Although Asterix, I shouldn't have as many cards because I'm sure with, with that addition, it would have changed the balance. Absolutely. And yeah. I think this game would definitely be better with a third and fourth player in the auctioning. It would be much tighter. You wouldn't always get the cards you want. And I think there, there would be a lot more uh, play, play between the people. Right, right. So. I think yeah, that, I agree. That would be cool. Okay, and our final category is uh, the upside downside of the game. So, uh, is there anything that would steer you away from the game, or anything that uh, you would initially suggest could be improved? These cards are so nice to feel and hold and manipulate. That um, that was a real attraction to me. We've only played one once, but as I said, I was sort of tired by turn four, and. I mean, we could set this up and play again, and I would be entertained, uh, but I don't feel the draw uh, to set it up and play it again immediately. Right, okay. Um, I would argue too, so for me the downside is often learning the iconography of a new game. I'm just averse to that because I, I, I want it to be very intuitive. But I actually didn't find this too hard to learn. I was, uh, you know, daunted at the beginning because I thought, oh no, it's one of these kind of uh, iconography games. But then as soon as you, it took me about five minutes to figure it out where it's like, oh, that's get a resource, that's convert a resource. And as you say, I didn't quite figure out how valuable these were. Um, but as soon as you start to understand the basic pattern, then you'll get all of the iconography all at once. I remember when I was doing the teach and we were talking about the difference between extraction just getting the resource and uh, processing where you're converting the resource and you said because uh, there was an there's an arrow involved but once you realize no arrow is extraction and with an arrow That's is right. processing it was pretty straightforward. It was straightforward. Yeah. So, yeah. Overall, uh, if you have any experience with this game, let us know your thoughts on the game. Um, I'd say overall, not a bad game. It's a nice little compact game and uh, decent. I would say it's especially made, it's, it's an engine builder game. If you love engine builders, this one will probably work for you. Yeah, I'd agree. And uh, I'm interested to see what's in the uh, expansion. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll have to check that one out in the next video. Very good. Now get out there. Get gaming. And be legendary.